Hello friends and welcome to This Old Tech. I'm your host, Seth Macy. Today we're gonna take a look at the most finicky of all connectors, the NES 72 pin connector. Show you some options for repairing or outright replacing it. Recently, I ordered a copy of my favorite games, Bionic Commando, and was honestly pretty stoked to play through it again on my NES, but guess what? Didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because time is cruel and permanence but an illusion. In other words, my 72 pin connector is worn out. I'm gonna show you how to fix that, and then I'm gonna play Bionic Commando and eat pizza rolls. You may or may not see one or both of those things at the end of this video. In the 1980s, everyone who owned a Nintendo Entertainment System knew the only way to fix a faulty game was to eject it, hold it to your lips, and blow on it. If it didn't work after that, you simply repeated the process with more force until it finally worked. This was not only wrong, but super gross, because you basically just sprayed spit particles all over your copy of Super Mario Bros. 3. On top of being unhygienic, your kid spit probably also contributed to corrosion on your cart's contacts. And if your mouth was particularly juicy, a glob of nasty saliva could actually short some of the contacts, and that's bad. But what's the real solution to this very real problem? Well, there are two that immediately spring to mind, one of which will cost you nothing but your time, and the other will cost you like 20 bucks. Oh, it also costs time. So both of them cost time, but one of them costs money. Before I get into how to repair your NES's 72 pin connector problems, let's take a look at exactly how your NES is able to entice the game to emerge from the cart. You might think there are ghosts inside and the NES is a conduit for their spirits. It is simply impossible for me to prove there aren't ghosts inside every video game cartridge. So to be safe, just assume your game collection is very haunted. However, there is science behind how your cartridge gets its code inside your game. Although I guess technically it's engineering. Fight about that in the comments, scientists and engineers. Anyway, engineering basically applied science, but I'm neither a scientist nor an engineer. And as previously discussed, I know very little about the spirit realm, but I'm going to do my best to explain the very simple theory behind how your game goes from your cart to inside your NES and then up on your screen. Now you're playing with power. And electrical work, the kind that concerns itself with outlets and wiring and the like, the most important requirement is that all connections be two things, electrically and mechanically sound. In other words, you can hypothetically just lay two bare wires across one another and have them conduct electricity, but a slight breeze or a mouse whisper could separate them, breaking the circuit. In modern wiring, wires are twisted together snugly, and then a wire nut is twisted over the top. This makes the wires play nicely together forever. With your NES cart or pretty much any video game cartridge, the requirement isn't there for permanent powerful connection. In fact, that's kind of the point. But you also don't want your cartridge to just flop around inside the machine, so a balance has to be struck. The springiness of the NES 72 pin connector is such that you can slide in your cartridge without too much effort and have the pins give it just a nice little squeeze, like a little, a little electronic hug. Mm, it's so cozy. The metal contacts of the connector and the contacts of the cartridge then create a beautiful pairing that allows the free movement of electrons from one to the other. It's electrically sound and mechanically sound enough, but therein lies the problem. You see, the 72 pin connector needs to make full contact with the cartridge's contacts in order to work. The rituals we used to do as kids, like blowing on the cartridge, work sometimes because the fail state of the 72 pin connector wasn't total. You might put the cart back in, all gross with spit, at a slightly different angle. And that angle is enough to make contact. On top of that, every time you insert and eject a cartridge, you're kind of ruining it. I mean, it's like a microscopic level, but it is a destructive process nonetheless. That metal on metal contact, coupled with pulling the cart in and out, removes just the, the littlest bit of metal from the contacts and the connector. So to sum it up, the NES and pretty much every other cartridge-based system relies on an electrically sound contact between pieces of metal, which in the case of the NES is done through the 72 pin connector. That connector's ability to grip weakens over time, which leads to bad connections between the NES and the game cartridge, which leads to that annoying blinking red light and things like a flashing screen or random characters on the screen instead of sprites. There are a lot of reasons why your system might not work, but the biggest culprit of all is that 72 pin connector. Darn it, get your act together. Thankfully, it's really easy to fix and I'm gonna show you right now. To take apart an NES, all you need 
is a Phillips head screwdriver. Yes, I know, it seems impossible, but it's true. If you have a spinning hard drive, which we know the NES does not have, avoid any magnetism. Since this has no magnetism, get a magnetic screwdriver. And if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, just buy one of these little boys. You can turn it into a magnet. All right, and then when you're done, you can demagnetize it. You can do this infinitely, as many times as you want to. No one can tell you to stop because you are your own boss and you don't live with your dad anymore. And if you do, tell him, dad, leave me alone. I'm fixing the NES that you bought me in 1986. All right, so as you can see underneath of here, one, two, three, four, five, six screws. There are actually eight, but these don't have to come out. These can stay. You also don't really need to remove the cover for the expansion port because, well, they just never made an expansion port. So let's just leave that on there. All right, another nice thing about the NES as opposed to basically any modern piece of equipment is it's not only easy to take apart, but there's only three types of screws that you have to keep track of. One of those screws did not want to come out. That's okay, you can live there, it's your home. Do we need this? Nope, not now at least. So now we have more screws inside that we have to take apart, but thankfully they're all just the same old darn screws. We're taking off the RF shielding, the radio frequency shielding. This is an FCC requirement for electronic devices that transmit over uh, broadcast. So, you know, the channel three or the channel four and these were to keep interference from being a problem with uh, old televisions using an RF modulator, which you should never use because they suck. And most TVs these days have more than enough jacks that you can just use your regular old composite. All right, let's take off the RF shielding. Look at the guts beautiful guts. We'll put this away. We don't need it. All right. Now this is where I said that you do have different type of screw right here. You have these silver screws that go through multiple layers and you should probably keep an eye on those ones to remember it when you go back to put it together again. Do you need to use those? Here's a, here's a secret. You don't. No one will care. All right. Let's pop this bad boy out of here. So doesn't come up, it actually comes sort of forward. And that is your little cartridge uh, wagon there, your little uh, little holder. Not, 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 nothing too special about it. Little locking mechanism in there. If you've ever wondered how that works. Boy, listen to that. Creaky, love it. So let's move this aside. Here it is, friends, the 72 pin connector. Now we lift the whole guts right out of there. Also, be careful not to cut yourself because this is razor sharp. There it is, we've done it. We've gotten rid of the old 72 pin connector that doesn't work well at all. And now we're just gonna replace it with a new, uh, I forgot to order a new one, but that's okay because it is possible to salvage this one. And I'm gonna show you how. It involves dropping it into a pot of boiling water. All right, we've cooked it. Here's the critical part. You've got to make sure this is dry. Don't put it back into your NES if it's got any moisture in it whatsoever. None, zero. It has to be bone dry. You can get a little compressed air if you need to, if you're a little bit impatient. Um, you could just like smack it a bunch of times and then maybe use a little bit of alcohol and smack it again. But even then, I would wait, like wait maybe a day. Because if you put this in wet, it's gonna cause all kinds of problems down the road. We don't want problems down the road. We got enough problems right now, don't we? I mean, that's a bad way to look at life. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna be a little more positive. Now it's time to put it back together. The good news is 
and it goes back together pretty damn easily. First, we wanna make sure we have it set in the proper orientation. Let's get that baby on there. And it goes on uh, a little bit of force, but you'll know when it's on there. All right, let's get everything lined up, ready to go back together. We're gonna grab our carriage and we're gonna put this back on. Again, has to go in a little bit like that. And yo, know, look, there's nothing to it but to do it. You know what I mean? Now, let's start the process of putting screws back in. And I'll tell you what I just did that was real dumb. I put this one in when I shouldn't have. Why is that so dumb, you're saying? Well, because we have the RF shield. We have the RF shield that we have to put back on there or else we're gonna be in violation and the FCC is gonna come after us. That's not true. The FCC is not gonna come after you if you don't put the RF shield back on there. Only if you're the manufacturer. We're gonna put that right there. We're gonna put the carousel, the cartridge, the case, the kid thing back together. This is where we're gonna use our silver screws. Now, when you put it back in, my advice is to do that first, then line up the screw holes. Also, don't torque these all the way down just yet. Okay, we've got these six screws in place. We've got these two screws in place. We know now that the cartridge goes in, sits down properly, comes back up. Feels a little bit tighter, which is good. Now we can put on the RF shielding and avoid any fines from the federal government of the United States of America. All right. And make sure that everything's torqued down to some you know, extraordinary level of precision. Highly recommend a magnetized screwdriver or magnetizing a screwdriver. And if you don't have this little dumb tool that I bought for the fact that I just like to buy dumb things, don't fret. You can just use any magnet that you have in your house and that will imbue it with some of the magical powers of magnetism. All right, let's put the cover back on. Give her a flip. Now we have how many left? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six screws left. That's exactly how many we want because there are six holes for them to go in. That means we didn't mess up along the way. Thank God. Boom, we've done it. We have repaired and replaced the 72 pin connector, but we didn't replace it with a new one. We replaced it with an existing one that we boiled. Will it work? Let's find out. The good news is the process is exactly the same. Whether you boil it or whether you get a new one. It comes apart the same, it goes back together the same. A new one's just almost guaranteed to work, whereas an old one boiled Kind of, kind of taking life in your own hands. Okay, now the moment of truth. Will Bionic Commando work in our newly repaired NES? By the way, replacing the 72 pin connector with one that you bought off of eBay or Amazon, it's the exact same process. You just don't have to bring boiling water into the mix. So let's find out, shall we? There it is. Isn't that beautiful? Bionic Commando. I get to play it now, thanks to my NES repair skills, which are second rate at best, but I do know a little thing about perseverance. And that might just be the trick that will save us all. So there you have it. If you're having a little bit of trouble with your NES, if it's not reading cartridges correctly, you're probably gonna wanna replace that 72 pin connector, or you're gonna wanna boil it in water. It's up to you, really. One of them is free, one of them isn't. I'm Seth Macy, this has been This Old Tech. 
You fit so many bionic commandos in this bad boy. I'd slap it, but then I'm worried it wouldn't work anymore.